Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... You see, the kingdom of God is Christ-centered. It's His rule and reign. It's His work. We do not choose Him. He chooses us. We don't find Him. He finds us. And so it is in the first two parables as well. It's Jesus who finds us the treasure hidden in the field, the pearl of great value. The service will begin after this opening hymn. I'm Pastor Scott Porath from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Eagle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> and Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in Deuteronomy chapter 7. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers, that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in Romans chapter 8. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, 
Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, out of his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Ah, a treasure hidden in a field, one pearl of great value. You'd go and sell all that you have in order to buy that treasure, wouldn't you? You'd go and sell all that you have to buy that priceless pearl. You'd give up everything to have Jesus, wouldn't you? After all, if you have Jesus, then you have the forgiveness of all of your sins. You have eternal life. Salvation and heaven are yours. Why then is it such a struggle to come and hear God's word? Why do you live as if you can live without his life-giving body and blood? You have a hard time giving up a ball game for Jesus. You hem and haw about giving up a portion of your salary, if you even give it a thought at all. And asking a blessing and, and giving thanks for his daily bread is often not even on your radar screen. Dearly beloved, if these parables are about what we do in order to get Jesus, the priceless treasure, then we're all relegated to the furnace room where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these parables? Jesus asks his disciples and with great confidence they answer yes. And we're right there with them, thinking that we have the kingdom of God all figured out. And yet we always get it so wrong. In our sinful state, we are always getting in the way, getting in the way of Jesus, interpreting everything in a man-centered way. We hear these parables and automatically think about what we can and should do to get the treasure. You realize that's absolutely contrary to the gospel, don't you? I mean, are we the creators of all things in heaven and on earth? Do we ascend into heaven in order to set our righteousness before God? Do we search out and find Jesus boldly and confidently entering into the kingdom of God, standing upon our own two feet? Today, God calls us to repent of such thinking, to confess that we have not understood his parables, his kingdom, his gospel. Once again, we have sinned against the chief commandment, we have not feared, loved, and trusted in God above all things. No, we have lived as if we are God. Our foolishness is best revealed with the third parable here in our text. The kingdom of heaven there is said to be like a net that is thrown into the sea and it gathers all kinds of fish. And when the net is full, it's dragged to the shore where the good are sorted into containers and the bad are, are thrown away. We don't throw the net, drag in the haul, or sort the fish. At the close of the age, that is on the last day, we're not the ones to distinguish the evil from the righteous. We don't throw out the evil and gather in the righteous. That's not our work. That's God's work. You see, the kingdom of God is Christ-centered. It's His rule and reign. It's His work. We do not choose Him. He chooses us. We don't find Him. He finds us. And so it is in the first two parables as well. It's Jesus who finds us the treasure hidden in the field, the pearl of great value. Of course, our sinful nature objects to such an interpretation. 
I mean, on the one hand, we don't like being lost ones or hidden. We like to be in charge. We like to have a hand in everything. We like to garner at least some of the credit. But God's Word clearly describes who we are by nature, that we are spiritually dead, blind, and enemies of God. And so if there is any saving work to be done, He must do it all. And that makes us dependent ones, and our pride hates being dependent. On the other hand, we don't like Jesus' interpretation of the kingdom because we know all too well that we are not a treasure, that we have no great value. We readily confess our unworthiness, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. We are sinners, one and all, who deserve to be thrown on the trash heap, to be cast into the fiery furnace, to spend eternity weeping and gnashing our teeth. Ah, now we are finally getting somewhere. Now we can understand the parables that Jesus speaks to us. Now the gospel shines brightly. The gospel is about who God is. And in Jesus, sinners see most clearly God's grace, that He is merciful to us. We don't deserve God's love, His choosing, His finding, His saving work but God has created you. And in spite of your sinful ways, you are precious to Him. To use the language from the Old Testament reading, the Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for His treasured possession. And so He has sent His only begotten Son to purchase you, to gather you, to have you for Himself. Jesus, the Son of God, sells all that He has. He leaves the glorious confines of His heavenly home. He comes into His creation to redeem His treasured possession. Amazing. God becomes man in Christ Jesus so that He might sell all that He has to be rejected and tortured and killed because you are precious to him. Jesus has given his life for you, literally, and by his blood he purchases you, purchases you from sin, death, and the devil so that you may be his own and live under him in his kingdom. That's the treasure of the kingdom that you are saved by God's grace through faith on account of all that Jesus has done for you. Have you understood all these things? Yes, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. And so he does, because the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who keeps His covenant and steadfast love with you. For you, His precious ones, His treasured possession. Forgiven in Christ, we give thanks to God for being merciful to us sinners. Thanks be to God through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I'd like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in the Eagle area, please join us at Emmanuel Lutheran Church on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broad broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.